Hello, I'm Dan from Ace Free Models and Sales, and right next to me is our 2021 Jayco Red Hawk 24B. Now today, I'm gonna to be showing you everything you need to know about the outside and inside of this RV, so you'll be all prepared when you decide to rent with us. Starting off at the driver's side here, we have a little sticker that shows you how tall this RV is. This is 12 and a half feet high, so that means uh, be wary of parking garages and drive throughs Most tunnels should be okay, unless you're going into New York City, for example, but again, Gas station should also be okay. Over here we have a little storage area. There are plenty of storage areas on this Jayco. Over here is the compartment for the generator. Now the generator is going to run on the engine gas, so as long as you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. This is going to power all the major electrical appliances in your RV. That'll be your AC, your microwave, your TVs, and your outlets. Uh, one thing you should not do is run the AC and the microwave at the same time. This generator is not powerful to run both. And in the case that you accidentally do run both at the same time, the breaker will be right here. This will flip back in the case that you do that. All I have to do is flip it towards you, and that's it. Everything else is handled inside the RV. And next to the generator, you have the power cord compartment. So the power cord is going to be 30 amp connection. Uh, we'll also give you a 15 amp adapter just in case. But this is going to run all the major electrical appliances that the generator will. When you're plugged in at your campsite, you won't have to worry about the generator at all. And this, you can run the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're plugged in. Above that, you have your TV cable inlet. We'll give you the TV cable, so if you're at your campsite, you have full hookup. You can just plug the TV cable in here and you can get all the local channels through cable. If you don't have cable hookup, you can also use the antenna in the RV to find local channels that way. In the back of the driver's side here, you have a big storage compartment where we give you everything you need to know here. But first of all, over here, you have a bunch of valves for the water system on this Jayco. It looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't. You only have three settings you have to worry about. So you have two valves here. This one can go between one, two, and three, depending on where you turn it. And the second one will go four, five, and six. So right now, you can see that's set to three since it's pointed to the right. And this one is set to five since it's pointing upward. This is gonna be normal. That means when you're on the road, you just wanna use the sink or the shower, for example. You're just gonna have it on this setting and you can pretty much take any water from any of the faucets. If you do want to fill up your fresh water tank, you wanna set it to country fill. So that means you're gonna turn this to one and you're gonna turn this to four. Then you're gonna plug in the fresh water hose and this will fill up the tank. If you're at your campsite and you wanna use the city water, that is the campsite's water instead of your own, you're going to set it to city fixtures. You're going to set this to two and set this to six. Hook up the same fresh water into the same inlet and you will take water from their campsite. So just those three things. Three and five when you're by default on the road. One and four to fill up the fresh water tank and two and six if you're connected to city water. Also in this compartment, you have this bag here which is going to have your fresh water and city water hose. That's this white hose right here. Your black wire here is going to be your TV cable, and this yellow plug here is your 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. Next to that, you have the bag for the waste hose, which you will use to dump out the waste tanks, and I'll show you that right away. In the back here is your dumping outlet. This will be where you dump out your gray and black waste tanks. So all you want to do is take your sewer hose, take this part with the teeth, clip it on clockwise until it snaps on, then you'll take the other half with the 90 degree elbow. Stick this in the ground at the campsite or wherever dumping station you're at. And then you have two valves here which are color coded. You have the gray valve which is for your sinks and your shower, your gray tank. And you have the black valve for the black tank, that's your toilet. Once you pull it out like this, that means it's open. If there were anything in the tanks right now, they'd be coming out due to gravity. We recommend you pull open the black one first and then the gray one to flush it out. Once you're done, the sensors will be inside to show you how full or empty the tanks are. You push them in to close them, you unscrew the hose, and then you just put the cap on, and you're all set. Around to the back of the RV, we have two things here. You have your service ladder here. Um, please don't go up there, there's nothing interesting up there. It's just for service repairs. And also up there, you can see that small black rectangle that is your rear view camera. They'll go up out about eight feet, so when you put the RV in reverse, it'll show up on the display or you can also keep it on when you're driving just as a safety precaution. Now onto the passenger side, you have a lot of storage on this side for a storage area. Next to that, you have your propane outlet down here. 
If you have a grill at your campsite, you want to hook it up here, you can take propane from the propane tank that's connected to this RV. Next to that, you have another storage area. Over here, you have the back of the fridge. This is going to start leaking water. It's just condensation, so it's not broken. You have two exhausts here for the hot water. I'll talk more about the hot water inside. And you have the furnished exhaust, so expect it to be hot. Don't put your hand here. Below that, you have another storage area. And finally, you have your propane tank. The propane tank is going to be about 14 gallons. And you have the sensor right here that will show you how full the propane tank is. If you do have to refill it, truck stations and campsites will do it for you. This will last about one week before you'll have to refill it. And it's going to power things like your hot water heater, your stove, your oven, and your fridge when you're not plugged in. That concludes the outside of the walkthrough for this RV, so we can head inside now. When you enter, you have the power step that comes out when you open the door. Speaking of the door, you also have a screen door that disconnects from the cabin door here. Upon entering the RV, you have a lot of switches around the entrance here. First of all, below the stairs here is your house battery. The house battery is going to be for very minor electrical things like the lights or the awning or the slide out. That means you don't have to be plugged in and the generator doesn't have to be on just to turn on a light, for example. This will be charged when you're plugged in or when the engine is on, so you can just expect this to work. The switch for that is going to be the main power right here. So when this red light is on, that means that the house battery is on. Over here you have the awning light, that will be the LED lights outside for the awning. The speaker you can switch from inside to outside, so if you have the radio on, you can listen to it from the inside or the outside. The awning switch here. It runs on the house battery, you just hold down out, and the awning will go out. It goes out about 8 feet total, and it is only for shade, so if it gets windy or rainy, you should pull it in. Alright, next to the awning switch, you have your carbon monoxide and propane detector, and on the other side, you have your fire extinguisher to my left. Also above me, we have the smoke detector. Over here you have a few more switches and lights. The interior lights are the galley lights on the ceiling here. The power step, you can switch this on, that just means when you open up the door, the power step will come out. And the exterior lights are the porch lights on the outside of the RV. Also at the entrance here you have the control panel. The control panel is probably the most important part of the inside. Over here we'll show you all the levels of all the tanks in the RV. So the battery here, you can expect this to be charged. You have the fresh water tank, you hold this down, you can see this is one third full. And the black tank and the gray tank are both empty. You have the slide out here, this is going to run on the house party like the awning. If you want this to work, just make sure the parking brake is on and the keys are out of the ignition. And that goes for the awning as well. All I have to do is just hold down extend. At the foot of the bed here, you have a few switches. This will be for the ceiling lights, and this will be the slide out. You have a switch here, also on the control panel. This here is your thermometer. This will obviously control the AC and the heating. So if you want to turn on the AC, for example, make sure you have the generator on or you're plugged in. You just want to switch this to fan, and then switch it to cool. You'll hear the unit on the ceiling go on. You can control the temperature here. If you wanted to use heat, for example, in the winter, you won't have to have the generator or be plugged in for this to work. This is just going to run on the propane and the battery. And here, you can control how powerful the AC will be. Next, I'll show you how to find channels on the TV. So, obviously the antenna is not in the best spot right now. Um, you have to have the TV on, obviously. Hit input. Make sure it's on the TV source. Press the menu. Go to channels and then press auto channel search. You can either pick from the antenna, as we are using right now, or if you're at a campsite and you want to use the cable instead, you just use cable from the wall. But you're just going to hit antenna for now, and it'll find channels for you. It should take no more than 10-15 minutes. 
Over on the passenger side here, you have the kitchen. So first of all, you have a few cabinets up on the ceiling. Your kitchen sink is just going to function like a regular sink. We like to keep the turntables for the microwaves in the sink, just in case the latch breaks when you're driving. It won't come out and shatter along the ground. We have more cabinet space down here. Drawers over here. You have a standard house microwave here. You have the stove here with the fan and the lights. You just want to take the top off here. Set it to the fire option and then hit the burner. And there you go. Again, this is going to run on the propane. The same goes for the oven. This knob here is going to be for the oven. You have the temperatures and everything on the knob here. Once you're done with the stove, just leave the top open for a few minutes after you're done. Otherwise, if you close it immediately, the propane in there might get trapped and the glass might shatter. In the back here is your fridge. This is going to run on the propane tank when you're not plugged in. But when you do plug in at a 30 amp connection, it will automatically switch over to electricity. If you want to have it on, you just press the power button here. This here will control how cold it is, with five snowflakes being the coldest. A here is going to mean automatic. The teardrop here is going to mean propane, so right now we're not plugged in, so it's running on propane automatically. You just want to hit mode, and you can switch to electricity if you want to do it manually. Otherwise, you can just leave it on A, which will be propane. Also in the bedroom, you have your fuse box here. We'll give you extra fuses and the envelope in the cab in the front, just in case anything blows. In the back here, you also have your bathroom. As far as the toilet goes, it's just going to be like an airplane toilet. You just want to push down on this pedal here. Just make sure the water pump is on. The toilet paper here is RV specific, so you're going to have to go to the camping section at Walmart, for example, or campgrounds themselves will have stores that will sell it for you. Over here, you have your standard sink, standard shower, and we'll also give you bottles, uh, little solution bottles for the toilet, just in case the smell comes up. Uh, you're just going to pour half a bottle or the full bottle down there to freshen it up. The dyna area here also turns into a bed, and I'll show you that right now. First, you want to take the table here. There's a black knob here. You're going to turn counterclockwise, and this will loosen the tabletop. Eventually, you can take it off of the pole, like this. As I'm taking the cushions off, you'll see more clearly that there are seatbelts here enough for three people. Then you're just going to take the table here, the tabletop, lay it across here, put the cushions here back on top, and then we'll give you an extra cushion up in the overhead bunk. You'll just put this in here, and there's your bed. To operate the windows, the blinds here are just push up and pull down just like that. And the windows, you'll just have to turn these clockwise to put them out, and then counterclockwise to pull them back in. Over here, you have more sleeping area in the overhead bunk. You just want to take this cushion, flip it down like this, and then you have the ladder. You just hook it up to the latches here, and there's your overhead bunk. Up here in the front cab, we'll also give you this little envelope here. This blue envelope in here is going to be your registration. This slip lock bag will have extra fuses for the fuse panel. And then we'll also give you uh, a manual for the RV. Now that we're in the front cab, I'll show you the keys here. This one here is the ignition, the Ford truck. The purple one here is going to be for the cabin door. And this here is going to be for the compartments outside. I'll just put these in here. Over here on this display, you just want to hit home. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth. You also have your rear view camera. This will go about, about eight feet, or when you put it in reverse, it'll also show up. And you also have your radio here. AC is just like a regular truck or car. Over here at my left foot, you have the parking brake. You just push down. And if you want to release it, just like that. And that's all I have to say for our 2021 Jayco Red Hawk 24B model. I've been Dan from Ace of Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.